Breathing is very important. Thank you, Carl. Thank you, Jamie. And you know what? All around the globe on the 25th of May, which is today, we commemorate World Thyroid, Thyroid Awareness Day. Now, this special day on the worldwide health calendar is dedicated to thyroid patients and all those committed to the study and the treatment of thyroid diseases. Now, this morning, consultant endocrinologist and senior lecturer in the Division of Endocrinology at Tigerberg Hospital and Stellenbosch University is Dr. Ankia Kutsi. She's here to help us discuss thyroid disease and really just unpack this very important day. It's so good to have you here, Dr. Kutsia. Thank you so much. <laughs> now, I have to admit, when I had to, I had to Google where's my thyroid, I had to, and I'm pretty sure a lot of people don't know where the thyroid is located or what the function of it is. And I'm hoping you are here to just unpack it for us. Sure. Do you have a Google function? I got a Google function, but you're much better than Google. <laughs> Don't worry. That's what all medical students also do. They Google what we teach them. <laughs> so first of all, I mean, the thyroid is a vital endocrine organ and it sort of plays its part in this elegant hormonal system that I'm not going to die, sort of sidetrack on. But the thyroid is literally in the anterior aspect of your neck. It's located between the, the bone um, and the larynx, like the, the collarbone where they come together, and the larynx, which in men is the Adam's apple, mm. and it sits towards the side. So it's also called a butterfly organ, if you want to remember that. Okay. Because it actually wraps around the throat in a butterfly fashion. Okay. What is quite interesting about the thyroid is it develops um, in the embryo while it's still in the mom's stomach while it develops. It's actually developing in the back of the tongue. Oh. And as you mature as, um, you know, as a fetus around the 12th week, it actually goes towards the bottom and then sits on the side or where you expect yours to sit um, when you Google. Yes. <laughs> So, so as today, I'm sitting here. My thyroid is healthy. What is the purpose of my What is the purpose of our thyroids in our bodies? Sure. So, um, I always joke and say the thyroid has a finger in every single pie in okay. the body, and it does it <laughs> very, very well. So, literally, the thyroid facilitates metabolism and you know when we think about metabolism we often think about metabolism as being overweight and so forth but remember metabolism also involves water balance it involves the function of the kidneys it involves bone formation so every single biological process in the body each system that you can think of is regulated by thyroid in children it's specifically important um, because it facilitates growth and neural development. So, um, so that's why it's so important, you know, to make sure that your thyroid function is actually optimal. It facilitates each thing in your body. The thyroid is very important, and you did tell me the Afrikaans translation is your skulklir. True. Your skulklir. It is very, very important. Now, today is a thyroid awareness day. So, of course, what are some of the common thyroid diseases that we can unpack this morning on the show? Sure. So, so when I think of thyroid thyroid, I think of it maybe in two boxes, and I'll tell you where I come from. So when you think about the thyroid, the first thing that you think of is anatomy. Mm. So the area where it is, whether it's of a normal shape, and so forth. And then the other aspect that you think about is function. And that's what we've just discussed, you know, the cardiovascular function, bones, etc., etc., etc. So if I think about thyroid disease, we can have functional thyroid abnormalities where the thyroid is either over-functioning or under-functioning. You might have heard the terms hyper and hypothyroidism. Or I think about anatomical problems where you might feel a nodule in your thyroid mm. that may or may not be related to a thyroid functional abnormality. Okay. So the presence of a functional abnormality often goes with an anatomical abnormality, but doesn't have to go with an anatomical abnormality. Okay, if it can that be makes on sense. its own, it can be a standalone. Sure. It can be a standalone. Yeah. Now, for someone who might think, is it as something as, what are some of the symptoms people might experience? What are some sure. of the things they need to look out for and maybe think, okay, maybe I should go have my thyroid checked out? Oh yeah, no, great question. So there's certain diseases that we know are affected or affect thyroid function per se. 
Um, I'm not going to go into the detail, um, but also if you use certain medications that is known to affect the thyroid, or if you've had surgery or radiotherapy in the neck area, okay. certainly that population group needs to make sure the thyroid are normal because the subtle signs of hypothyroidism might be missed. Okay. okay. So from a functional point of view, ugh, the thyroid is the scapegoat for many, many problems. Takes the blame because it's got its fingers and all the pies. Exactly. <laughs> so a lot of symptoms that can be attributed to thyroid abnormalities can actually happen in a lot of other conditions and diseases. So if you think about underactive thyroid, tiredness, are you tired? No, I'm not. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm tired from waking up early, but I'm not tired constantly. So, so if I'm tired, you know, I'm going to blow my thyroid. Okay. All I'm saying is it's usually a constellation of symptoms. So underactive is everything is slowed down. Tiredness, brittle hair, puffiness around the face, a little bit of water retention maybe, as opposed to an overactive thyroid where you're completely on the go. Okay. You know, you get a fast heart rate, you're hypervigilant, um, you react fast, um, and, and you struggle to sleep, for instance, because of that hyped up metabolism. Okay. Yeah. Very interesting. Well, we have a lot more to unpack. Sure. Dr. Ankia Kutsia is not going anywhere, so stay tuned to your Feel Good Breakfast show as endocrinologist Dr. Kutsia will be telling us more about thyroid disease after this. It's my Feel Good Breakfast show. Welcome back to S3, this is Expresso, and we are continuing our conversation, and this is a house discussion this morning with endocrinologist Dr. Ankia Kutsia, who is still with us as we chat all things about thyroid disease. Next, she will also be telling us how the disease is treated and how you can do a neck self-check from the comfort of your own home. Now, before we get into that, Dr. Kutsia, I wanted to know from you, what, what are some of the things that would cause thyroid disease? Sure. So, be it under or overactive thyroid disease, the commonest cause is actually autoimmune disease. If the listeners are not familiar with this autoimmune concept, it is really where the body recognizes a part of itself as foreign oh, and good. launches antibodies which can either tell the thyroid, make more thyroid hormone, or antibodies that actually suppresses the function of the thyroid. So it just depends which of those two you get. And we really, to confess, we don't understand the causes 100% but it certainly plays a significant role. This autoimmunity, it often goes in families. There's usually like a second hit, like maybe an exposure to a viral illness. We're all tired of talking about viruses. <laughs> <Yeah>. um, <laughs> oh. um, but that is the predominant cause. And I've alluded also to the fact that if you've had um, surgery to the neck or something like that, obviously that can damage the thyroid gland or the blood supply, etc., etc. Yes. Okay. I so think the next thing is, let's get practical. How do we do that self-check at home? Because I'm, I'm, I'm actually intrigued because, you know, whenever you have something like back in the day, tonsillitis, then you'd feel, okay, tonsils are swollen. Is it a similar check with the thyroid? Um, thank you for making my work very easy because it's nowhere thank goodness. near the tonsils. I'm, I'm, here, I'm here to help. I still and have my tonsils. <laughs> well, I would love to demonstrate on you, but with your two polo necks, you are beautifully covering the thyroid. Okay, so, we can pull so it down. Oh we could try, we could examine you. Move the Indeed, you can. <laughs> I'm not sure whether I'll trust that exam. <laughs> So, what you could okay. do is, you can expose your neck, very similar to mine, and then first look, when you look into the mirror, whether you are able to see sort of this butterfly-shaped organ towards the different, or towards the left and the right. That's supposed to be symmetrical. You're not going to see it in Zoe because of photo neck. Okay, yeah. You're not going to see I'll it. Here. <laughs> yep. If you don't see it, you're still okay. You don't necessarily have to see it. In someone that is significantly underweight, like okay. me, you might, be, <laughs> you might be able to see some form of a thyroid. But if there's an enlargement or an asymmetrical look to it, that would be something that you're concerned about. The next step would be to take a glass of water right. and put water in your mouth. We also do this in our practice when we examine the thyroid. Keep the water in your mouth and look straight in the mirror and swallow. 
when you swallow, and look when I do it again, you can see there's a yes. movement. So the thyroid moves up and down oh. when I swallow. Okay. Uh -huh. That is completely normal. Okay. All right. The second or the last step that you might do, but I would really advise that if you think there's asymmetry or if you think that you see a nodule that you'd rather go to a health practitioner that can yes. properly examine the thyroid, plainly because we can't all reach our necks to do a proper self-exam. And it yeah. would just be to lightly palpate the thyroid on both sides, put water in the mouth and swallow. Okay. And feel if you can feel anything Mostly that's different towards the other side. Okay. Wow, thank you. Now, Dr. Kutsia, how can we look after our thyroid? Is there something like, you know, foods we need to gravitate towards or maybe some things we need to avoid, um, to, you know, to prevent yeah. having to, you know, develop thyroid disease? Sure. I, I think the first thing is to not take over the function of your thyroid with artificial substances. We know there's a lot of... Um, things on the market to augment thyroid function. Most of them contain iodine. So um, in our lifetime, we need maybe one teaspoon of iodine, but you can't store it. So you need regular amounts of iodine throughout your life every day because the thyroid uses that to make thyroid hormone. Okay. So anything, make sure that your diet has got adequate iodine in, but not too much because we actually use excessive amounts of iodine to make the thyroid underactive in emergency situations. So it goes both ways. Okay. So not too much, not too little. I'm sounding like the three little bears. Yes. <laughs> yes. Just yes. right. All the middle. of the thyroid. <laughs> That's what's happening right now. Uh, but I, I'm so happy that we are raising awareness on a very, very important day because I think that we have so many more things to focus on in the world right now, but I'm glad we have a day to focus on the thyroid, which is often something that's not really focused on. So we'll continue focusing as well. And you know what? If you do have any questions, we have the good doctor in the house to ensure that you get them answered. So go into our social media platforms. If anything has popped up here and you feel that you want to question it, please feel free. Go to the Expresso Facebook page and ask away. It's World Thyroid Awareness. Day, and I think it's important that we commemorate and celebrate with a bit of information. It's my feel -good Welcome back to your Feel Good Breakfast show on S3 and we are back with consultant, endocrinologist and senior lecturer Dr. Ankia Kutsia who is still chatting with us all things thyroid on World Thyroid Awareness Day which is observed today the 25th of May. Now we'd also like to thank every single individual who have sent us through some questions via social media platforms. So let's take a look at the first question that's come through. All right, I'm going to read this straight up. This is from Chantal Menorts, and Chantal says, I had a growth on my thyroid gland a few years back and ignored it for quite a long time until a doctor picked it up. And when I went in for something else and advised uh, to go for a scan, which ended up being positive for papillary carcinoma cancer, I ended up going in for surgery two weeks later to remove the growth and uh, the right side of my thyroid, which was successful. I was then also diagnosed with uh, Hishimoto's disease. Um, I know go, and I go in for checkups for every six months at cancer care. I'm very thankful that the doctor advised me to go in for a scan that day as the growth could have eventually spread. Thyroid awareness is so important and very few people know about this particular day. So that's actually a success story if you uh, ask me. Indeed, but it just shows you also how functional thyroid abnormalities overlap with anatomical problems yes. um, and I'm so happy for Chantal I mean that she had a physician that noted that and that treated her very appropriately. Um, papillary thyroid cancer is common in females okay. um, especially in, in younger females and as is Hashimoto's thyroiditis which leads to hypothyroidism um, and both of these entities are managed with different modalities. So as you've heard, Chantal had the thyroid lobectomy, which is the removal of the one side of where this growth is, okay. which is usually very, very, very successful, but obviously need to be followed up and, and looked that there's no other complications. And Hashimoto's usually causes a destruction of the functional aspects of the thyroid, which leads to hypothyroidism, as we've discussed. Can the thyroid be completely removed mm. and we can survive without it? Yeah. What, what then happens? What, what, do we then need to like ingest different 
hormones or chemicals to give us that the to replace the function of the thyroid yeah. or what happens in that event sure uh, so endocrine organs are is extremely resilient organs so it's yeah. said that in order to lose function of an endocrine organ you need to lose about 90 percent of it so one can live without a thyroid. Luckily, in this day and age, um, we just replace thyroid hormone, and this is readily available and very easily managed. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, if there is a, are there any scenarios where, let's just say, thyroid problems are genetic or in your mm. family, etc.? I just wanted to find out because there was a question from mm. uh, Fat Fatima that said, sure. "Please put up the list of foods that's not good for the thyroid." I imagine that that is a mm. situation whereby uh, Fatima wants to protect herself from future thyroid problems. So, is there a certain list of foods that we could avoid that's not good? Sure. Well, so your first question in terms yes. of familial thyroid disease. Yeah, yeah. Autoimmunity tends to run in families. Okay. So certainly if your mother has a thyroid problem, it is maybe not a bad thing that as you sort of embark after your teens, young adolescents to get tricked. Yes. Yeah. Secondly, is there foods that you should avoid? That is a very, very, very difficult question because I'm not sure it is the food alone, but it is what the food is wrapped in. It is the, the, the preservatives used in food okay. that generally can affect every single organ system, specifically the endocrine hormonal system of which the thyroid is vital. So I think it is going back to basics and, and going towards less processed, less disruptive kind of foods in general. More organic. Indeed, Old you foods. said it spot on. Mm -hmm. No plastics, no microwaving. Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. That's all we that's that's what we needed to know. Right, Zoe? There yes, you go. That's no right. microwaving. <laughs> Well, Dr. Ankia Kutsia, <laughs> thank you so much for joining us this morning and really just unpacking everything that World Thyroid Awareness Day has is all about. And of course, it takes place globally on the 25th of May. So if you still have a comment or a question or you're not sure, you can always head on over to our social media pages. We are um, we, we are glad we are open to taking your questions and comments. So feel free to head on over there and don't forget that hashtag Espresso Show.